Hi guys, Graham again. Now I've completed construction of my version of the Endurance 10 Watt Plus laser system, incorporating the components that I obtained from George. And uh, many thanks to, uh, to all the cooperation that I've received from Endurance in uh, being able to make this project a reality. In conclusion to the previous video showing how I built that, I wanted to just quickly go over the machine that I have it fitted to. This is my CNC router that I built around 2011. It's had various uh, modifications and adaptions. Mostly it's used for uh, machining uh, wood and acrylic in a conventional CNC format. But uh, what I'll do now is I'll take the camera in my hand and I'll just go through how I actually fit and make the endurance laser work on this machine. Right, here we are. Let's walk around the machine and have a look at all the various components. First of all, I'll get down here and we'll look at the laser control. Uh, what this has is a power switch and uh, a laser active switch. And here we have the laser power and this is using a uh, pulse width modulation system with a digital readout so that I can see what the laser power is uh, is running at. It uh, will go up to about 99, 100%. And uh, back again, I've got a button here which turns the pulse width modulation on and off. Generally, I leave it on all the time. This knob here is a delay. There are some situations where you will get a little bit of a burn. Um, due to the time that the laser fires to when it actually moves and uh, I can actually add a slight delay into that up to about 150 200 milliseconds with this knob some jobs require it some jobs don't but I just included it so that uh, it was there if I needed it next to that for this particular 10 watt plus laser system we've got the uh, tech Peltier cooling power supply with uh, voltage and current readouts on it. So uh, that's all fired up now. I normally leave it with the power output for the laser wound to zero and then adjust it accordingly. Up here we have the laser head which is mounted and secured around the normal spindle motor for the machine. Uh, that is secured with an allen screw here uh, to clamp it in uh, securely in position so that's it what uh, what you see here if i get, get my hand around the other way this is the air assist pipe there is a little button here that allows me to swivel it around and move its position accordingly let's put that back about where it was there, that comes up to a, uh, a tube which sits in here. Now, this tube just, it can just pull off so that um, I can remove the head. When I want uh, air assist, I just drop that. I put the camera around over the top there. Now, I found that uh, when, I, um, when I fire up the uh, compressor, this uh, used to sort of pop off due to the initial uh, surge um, so I have this little ring here which I put around so it can't, can't come up. I, there are more sophisticated ways of doing this but I found that this is a fairly good fit. Um, one tube over another and uh, yeah, there's a little bit of air leakage, but th at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And it just makes it very easy to take on and off. The air hose runs all the way over the top of the roof. This uh, curly pipe is to my vacuum system for when I'm doing normal routing of acrylic and wood. And uh, for air assist, I'm using what is an airbrush compressor. I've got here, normal one for when I want to just 
blow particles away if I'm doing uh, normal routing and uh, this comp particular compressor has uh, a dual output so I can wind the air up when I need it with and with its own um, display. So uh, then moving further up to the top here I've got the uh, the cables now this is for the uh, temperature sensor uh, the one in this uh, braid here uh, is for the laser and this particular one here is the power for the uh, tech cooler and uh, they then come up around here to the uh, the control box and that has a switch on it I, when, I, when I activate that that's displaying uh, what I've previously shown in my videos is the Peltier voltage and current, the laser and the uh, laser temperature, uh, thermostat control, which is uh, just here. The cables from the bottom uh, controller come in to the side here. We've got uh, the uh, tech cooling power, temperature sensor, um, laser power and we've also got the TTL signal coming in which controls the laser output power. Um, these uh, directly run down to to the actual laser head itself. Everything has got uh, connectors on it so that when I'm not using the laser I can remove this box. It's just held on with a couple of um, thumb nuts there so as I say, when I'm not using a laser, I can remove that entire system. It only takes me about two minutes to put it all back together again because I've got uh, all these connectors. So the next thing I'll do is I'll fire it up and just quickly show you it doing something. Oh, by the way, also, I use Mac 3 as my uh, control system. I wrote my own post processors because all the design work is done using Vetric Aspire, so I wrote post processors for that. You'll look at this screen and think it doesn't look anything like a Mac 3 uh, screen because I found a program online which allows me to, to modify and put my own macros in, and um, this is a custom screen for laser work. I also have another customized screen for my normal CNC routing. Okay, now I'm going to run a test, so I'm going to put on my goggles whilst trying to do all of this. Okay, goggles on. Sorry, the camera went all over the place. Coming down here, just checking, I've got laser active. I've set the laser power to around 30%. Uh, I've got no delay, and um, all I have to do now is just check around the back here everything's running the tech cooler is running in temperatures around 19 degrees or so then trying to put this camera in this hand i come up here i've got a little program running which is just going to inscribe my logo i will first turn air assist on air assist on, you'll be able to hear the compressor running and uh, yep, air's coming out there. So I'm now going to just start this if I can find my mouse. There we go and uh, away we go. Here we are, we're running. Let's see how this uh, all turns out. Looks like it's doing a fairly good job at the moment. This is the first time I've actually run this on this type of wood and it's also the first time I've actually used the air assist. So this is the first uh, first test. Okay, it's a very quick job. It's uh, it's all over in all of that time. You'll notice here I I for my normal routing I've got a spoil board which is made from MD, MDF. Uh, when I'm doing laser work, I put a, uh, this is, I think it's around about a six or eight millimeter piece of aluminium plate. 
because uh, if the laser overshoots or hits the aluminium, it won't engrave it and I'm not going to ruin my spoil wall. So here we have it. Let me put some light on this and um, that looks pretty good. So I think um, I've got uh, good success at that. So I hope you guys found this video interesting as I step back and take a longer shot of uh, the entire machine and I'll call it a wrap. So I'll catch you the next time.